The collapse of Chinese giant Evergrande could start a chain reaction that leads to a disastrous, lost decade, for Australia. The collapse of Chinese property giant Evergrande may kick off another, lost decade, for Australia, marked by stagnant wage growth, a falling Aussie dollar, budget deficits and tax increases. But rather than a Lehman Brothers-style financial contagion, Evergrande's default instead marks a major structural adjustment to the Chinese economy, experts say. It is likely to lead to a restructuring that will see foreign investors hit hard but domestic lenders, customers and suppliers protected to a degree. In Australia, the biggest loser will be our iron ore exports, which brought in $149 billion last financial year. The good news is you're not going to have an acute crisis, but the longer-term trade-off is very bad, because you're going to have a chronic wind-down in all the commodity demand that matters to Australia, said David Llewellyn-Smith, chief strategist at MB Fund and founding publisher of Macro Business. Iron ore and coking coal are the two obvious ones, but other metals as well that are very in demand in that sector such as copper, some nickel, things like that. China has built an enormous steel sector in part to service this construction economy that was a one-off. AMP Capital Chief Economist Dr. Shane Oliver agreed that the property-fueled Chinese growth phase had run its course, but he was not as pessimistic about the implications for Australia. If Chinese property grinds to a halt that's a huge negative for Australia, but that seems unlikely to me, he said. Rather than a dead stop, he predicts a longer-term fall in demand for Australian commodities to fuel the construction industry will be partially taken up by the need for some of the same materials in green energy technologies. The world is moving to decarbonise, which means masses of demand for other commodities Australia produces such as copper and other metals, he said.